Greetings, Bellevue School District community. This is Ivan Duran, the proud superintendent of your district. Welcome to another community conversation where we are sharing news and updates on what is happening in the Bellevue schools. Today, I am joined by Lisa Neshiba, educator, and student Micah Zur from Newport High School to discuss the recent STEM fair. So Lisa and Mike, it's great to have both of you today and a talk with you. You know, I had the privilege of sitting in on the first day and I and I sat at the very end of it and I heard the panelists who are representing the biological, medical, and chemistry field. And I just really loved how diverse that group was. You know, I heard some really great examples of the work they do, and I just thought it was a, a wonderful way to start off the event. So I really was appreciative of it and really thankful for all the work that you did to pull that off. So, Mike, I'm just going to ask you now just to please introduce yourself and just tell us a little bit around what led you to your interest in STEM. Yeah, so my name is Mike Azure, and right now I'm a junior at Newport High School. Um, I'd say my first experience with STEM and what initially just grabbed my attention was probably going to the planetarium at Bellevue College. My parents, I don't know how they thought of it, but I went to the planetarium at Bellevue College and for me, just sitting in the chair, just staring up at the sky and hearing the guy talk about, you know, all the planets and all the stars, it was just so fascinating to me, especially just hearing about everything that there is in space and all the possibilities of extraterrestrial life and all that sort of stuff. And I mean, after that great planetarium experience, I finally convinced my parents to buy my first telescope. And I remember going out looking at the moon for the first time and looking at the stars. And I think just overall, just my parents have been just supportive of what I've been interested in. And overall, the STEM fair has been a great opportunity for me to just hear about what science has to offer because in high school, you maybe don't hear about all the possible careers and that sort of thing, but STEM fair really exposes everyone to the variety of what you can do in science beyond what is taught in high school. And for me, the STEM fair has really been an eye-opening experience to all the new and cool stuff that you can do. That, that's really wonderful, Mike, and I think it's just great to hear how your parents took you on a little trip and a little field trip, and just that alone was something that really inspired you to pursue it, and, and I really look forward to, see, to hearing and seeing what you end up doing with your interest. Uh, Lisa, please introduce yourself. Uh, certainly, and thank you, um, Dr. Duran, for having us on. It's very kind of you. Um, so yeah, I'm Lisa Neshaba. I'm a, a teacher this year across the whole district, being virtual, and lucky me, I got to meet Mike. Otherwise, I wouldn't have met Mike from Newport. The STEM fair started for all the reasons that Mike just outlined. That is exactly the experience we want students to have when they come to the STEM fair and for the same exact reasons. Mike just captured it perfectly. But that was our goal. That's great. Well, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the STEM fair. Tell us a little bit about the participants in this year's STEM fair, the variety of exhibits. Um, I know one of the highlights at the very beginning was the opening by Dr. Gupta. Uh, what was that like hearing from him and, and some of the other um, participants in this year's STEM fair? Oh, for me, it was phenomenal because it's it's not every day you get to hear from like a real public health policy expert, especially one that's so accomplished and been on large national TV networks. And he gave a great talk about you know COVID-19 and medicine in general. And the one part that STEM fair that I really love about it is just the Q&A afterwards because students can ask questions and moderators will field those questions. And for everyone, it's just so awesome to just actually be able to talk with a real accomplished scientist about what they do. And throughout the entire week, that sort of experience continued with our astronomy panel, our earth panel, computer science and engineering. For me, being a little bit of a space guy, I think physics and engineering were probably my two most favorite panels just because on the engineering panel, we did have two guys from SpaceX and one guy from Blue Origin, which just, I mean, for me, that was really impactful. And I know we have mechanical engineers and electrical engineers and just everyone that you could think of. And yeah, and having people from around the world too, we had some guys from the East Coast, a woman from South America, and especially with it being virtual this year, instead of just being limited to the Seattle area, we were able to have people, like I said, from all around the world, so. Great. Lisa, what would you add to that? 
Oh, it's really, Mike is a hard act to follow. Let me tell you, he captures it. This is this is why the STEM fair was great this year, because Mike was in charge. Um, so yeah, I, I would add that, that there was a lot of excitement. Um, one of the highlights in terms of what I love to see is the like on for students, just like Mike, for them to see themselves in one of the panelists. And Mike identified a number of individuals that we had this year that we otherwise wouldn't have been able to have in a in a regular year. Um, so virtual really opened the field for us. Uh, and we do strive very hard to have a, quite a diversity on our panelists. We want our students to see themselves there. And we hear over and over again every year from our panelists the how wonderful that is. And I hear constantly, if I had had this experience in high school, you know, how much farther would I be? Or how many of my friends of my friends might have been here? So that light goes off. And they, like Mike said earlier, they see that there's a range of, of careers, not just chemistry, physics, biology, environmental. It's it's so much more than that. Yeah, I agree. Like I said earlier, listening on the, the panelists and just hearing their perspectives and I forget the, the last one that spoke talked about, you know, the work that he's doing with blood cells and how that relates to the COVID-19. It was like, wow, this is like just real life. This is science in, in action. I mean, when people talk about how does this apply to real life, I think the STEM field really afforded people to really understand and our students to really hear from real scientists who are solving problems today. So I, I thought it was great. Um, so just, uh, Mike, I want to now talk a little bit about your um, project, but before I go there, I, one question I have, um, Lisa or Mike, do you know how many, do you know about how many people participate in the STEM fair? Given the metrics for the first night, we had about 100 people and throughout the rest of the nights, it was around 50. Um, and if you can watch the videos on our website later on, if you want to. That's good to know. Yeah, I think I'm definitely going to go back and uh, listen to the panel assign us. And I did, um, I did get to hear on the last, I think it was the engineer from South America that was on, I think it was from Chile. Yeah, that was really great. Just with the stuff she was sharing was pretty amazing too. So, so Mike, let's talk a little bit about um, you and your fellow students project. Um, so and knowing you and a number of your classmates work together on a project. So can you talk a little bit around just, you know, like, how did you all work together? You know, what did they teach you through this process? What did you learn from them? And, you know, what did you all learn together? Yeah, so obviously I, didn't put on the STEM for a loan, and I had a just an awesome team. And to name a few, I had Joshua, Manmi, and Ayla, and we all just worked together along with other members of the club to just cultivate basically a super collaborative and friendly environment. Um, in total, in the club, there was about 15 of us, and it was from high schools from all around the district. And without the STEM fair, I would never have met like people from Sammamish and Interlake and all that kind of stuff. So I mean. It was just a great experience to make new friends and meet new people. Um, I think the other thing about the STEM fair that really made it work was just that we all had the same goal in mind and everyone was respectful of each other and actually really cared about all of our ideas. And the other thing was that Nesh gave us a lot of freedom to just kind of experiment and see what worked and see what didn't and gave us some freedom to try out new ideas. And the biggest skill I guess I learned was probably how to organize the team and work with um, other scientists from around the world and learning how to you know connect with them and convince them and help them actually come to STEM fair. And Lisa, what advice did you give to the students while they were working together during this time? This, I have to say, is a direct outcome of the work that we did at Sammamish High School around problem-based learning. Uh, we happened to write under Tom Dunwald's direction and were awarded a $5 million grant over five years from the Department of Education. And this work allowed us to develop exactly what Mike just described in terms of the student experience. It's a tricky dance. You get better and better at it as a teacher, as an educator with time, but the dance is the tension between enough structure and direction for students countered by freedom and creativity, freedom to choose creativity to create what they want. Um, it was actually at a National Science Teaching Teacher Association conference where we were presenting to other educators about our work on PBL. The bus ride back, it occurred to me, this was such an exciting convention. Why can't my students have this exact experience, right? So thus was the birth of the STEM fair and Tom Dunwald was just so supportive. Um, but it was that it was exactly that structure where you, you give them enough advice 
and resources and a little bit of wisdom, expertise from the outside world to help them. And then you just, you kind of let them go. You give them a big question. And the big question was, how are we going to put on the STEM fair this year and get all these different people in and have it be successful? So you, you hand them this big ill-defined question and then you let them go. And that's, that seems to work exceptionally well. It seems to help students just like Mike do all of those things he just described, all the skills to build, all the connections he made with his peers, with outside experts. And it's just kind of magical what students are capable of. They never cease to astound me. And Lisa, can you talk a little bit around how was it for you planning this STEM fair this year and in, in the middle of a pandemic, you know, we're dealing with COVID-19 <laughs> and, and restrictions left and right. So yes. what was different for you? What did you, what was it like for you? Oh, it was so different. Especially in comparison to pre-pandemic, right? Yes. Thank you. It was so different. It was terrifying, but I will confess it's terrifying every year and every year up until the day I'm, I'm saying never again, never again. And then as soon as it happens, I'm like, I can't wait to start next year. If it hadn't been, I know, I know I keep going back to Mike, but that's really the truth. Mike was very proactive and I threw out the concept to all of my students. Hey, we need to do it virtually this year. Anybody want in? And he just took it and went with it. And um, what was so so it was different in a couple of ways. One is um, we actually had to move it up because of AP testing. We literally lost two months of planning time. We normally have from you know December on. Here we we had to pull this together in three months. It was crazy, but it was great. And then of course on the flip side of it, it we could open it up to around the world, mm -hmm. and we literally had people from around the world on our panels. And it was just a thing of beauty. That's great. That's so wonderful to hear. You know, one of the things we've been doing in the district is having a really intentional approach to really trying to expand, you know, um, STEM experiences across all of our schools, starting early, even in preschool. You know, we've added computer science and computational thinking, you know, in our elementary schools, you know, and so we really are working, I think, electric promote the power of STEM because we know that if we get students interested earlier, um, you know, that it will just allow them to really follow their passion and interest. So, Mike, I, I'm just wondering about you. You know, when do you remember when you really first became interested in math and science? You know, and you know, who are those educators or students or family members? You mentioned your family taking you on the trip, but you know, what else really like just helped you light that spark and then just keep it flourishing during this this these many years? The other thing that I can think of just off the top of my head is launching model rockets and having like little um airplanes that you could fly around just the rockets just seeing how you can just light a little flame and then something would shoot up 500 feet in the air and then comparing that to what happens in real life with spacex and how they can launch rockets to the moon and so i think that just sparked my interest just looking up at the sky and thinking about where humans could go one day Elisa, what, what could you add to Mike's response? I just agree with everything he just said. And and I agree with what you said earlier, uh, Dr. Duran. The earlier, the better. Absolutely. There's so much research behind that. And there's so much research, in fact, behind just that single experience. Mike's experience. I, I mean, when I did got my master's, I, I, I was more up on the literature than I am today. But I remember reading uh, studies around how that one thing, that one experience can make all the difference. In this case, Mike, you mentioned, you know, the trip to the planetarium at Bellevue College with your parents. It could be anything. And and certainly our hope is that the STEM fair does that. It's it's one of those that those moments of magic. Yeah, I would agree. And I think especially, you know, now during these times, I know it was just on, uh, I think it was April 19th when Ingenuity, you know, was the, you know, first uh, small robotic helicopter to fly on Mars, you know, and I know it only flew 10 feet, but the implications for that are going to be huge, you know, for, for us. And so I know I was pretty, you know, glued to that, you know, watching that and just seeing that. And it was just pretty exciting to see. So I'm, I'm sure you guys were watching those things. But those are kind of events that I think really do help to inspire people to think differently. And then I just also feel like, especially here in Bellevue, you know, as you mentioned, Mike, being able to go to the planetarium, you know, Kids Quest, you know, our different museums that we have. I mean, there's just so many opportunities and just really encourage people and especially our students to look at the broad range of courses that we provide to you in, in our school district. You know, you do be able to do rocketry, you're able to do, you know, coding, you know, you're able to do our class. We have so many opportunities, so we just have to keep building upon them. 
Well, I just want to thank you both for all of your service and and um, and work that you did to pull off this year's STEM fair. Um, I you know was invited to it. I saw the advertisements for, it, but you know until I actually went and attended it, I was like, wow, this is pretty amazing. So I just thank you so much for for everything that you've done. Deeply appreciative. Oh, thank you for your support so much. And I want to thank all of the administrators over the years who have supported the work of the STEM fair, starting with Tom Dunwald, but also Scott Powers, who who introduced the STEM fair for many years, including this year and gave, you know, incredible support. And then currently, of course, um, across all the my current schools, uh, Dion, Derek, Anisha, thank you all so much for your support. I also just want to, you know, acknowledge, you know, all of the work of our school leaders and educators. Um, I just have to say that everyone has accomplished so much during this incredibly challenging year, you know, and I'm just so grateful for everyone's commitment and service to our students, you know, and, and Mike, as you said, you know, this STEM fair was just wasn't just a one school thing. This was a multi school um, and students being involved across, you know, our organization and just appreciate how, you know, we come together to plan for these things and collaborate so that we can have these types of successful experiences and just encourage you all do more. I think this is great. And hopefully you guys can think about maybe doing some stuff in the summer as some follow up. Um, and now I just also want to thank everyone who was able to listen and join us in today's community conversation. I look forward to sharing more of them with you in the future and just encourage everyone to stay healthy and safe. Remember to follow the physical distancing guidelines, wear your mask, wash your hands. Um, we're still in the pandemic. We're still doing everything we can to follow these risk mitigation strategies, and we want to stay on that path so we can continue to provide more in-person services for our students. And as Mike said earlier, to ensure that we're um, opening our schools as close to normal as possible um, in, in the fall. So thank everybody and look forward to seeing you again. Bye-bye.